Hi everyone, for today's video, this will be about the best books that I've read so far within this year. The top 10. Yes, this will consist of the top 10 best books that I've read so far within this year. Just to get things started, I want to mention a few statistics first. In terms of stats, I'm not actually doing really well in comparison to the previous year. Just to give a comparison, from January 2020 until June 2020, I was able to read 71 books. And that's 35,000 pages long which is impressive. For this year, from January until the end of June, I was able to read 51 books and 20,000 pages long. So in comparison, the differences is 20 books and 50,000 pages. But that's completely okay. Booktube takes a lot of time and life gets in the way sometimes. So that means, well, less reading time. But that doesn't mean that I regret every one bit of doing Booktube and that doesn't mean that I don't like reading at all. There is no regret. I'm happy that I've started my booktube channel. I cannot believe it's 9 months already. So yeah, time really flies. And now there is more than 9,000 of you subscribed to my channel. That's absolutely amazing. I'm truly, truly grateful. My TBR pile has never been larger than now. I'm not kidding. I recommend books to you and you also recommend books to me. My previous video actually increased my TBR by at least 20 books. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. But anyway, let's get on with the list. So this list, it will consist of 10 best books that I've read so far within this year. So that's 10 out of 51 books. As usual, there are three rules that are included in my criteria, and that means there is no reread, there is only one book per author, and the books listed here are not exclusively published within this year. The books listed in this list just means that I'm reading them for the first time within this year. And lastly, although there is a ranking to this list, I want to make it clear that I recommend every single book within this list. Every one of them because I love them all immensely. At number 10 is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is the first book in Radiant Emperor duology. For those of you who don't know, this is one of Thor Book's most advertised book of the year, along with The Black Tongue Thief, which is incredible as well. But I think this one is slightly better than The Black Tongue Thief. Shelley Parker Chan has a lovely prose, and although this book has been heavily advertised as the song of Achilles meets Mulan. I'm usually very apprehensive about this kind of advertisement. Usually they don't really match what they advertise, but in this case, I think in a lot of parts, I think they really nailed the pitch. And I really love this book. It's an incredible book. It lived up to the hype. And there is something about the main character that really charmed me because, well, Zhu Chongba, she has this fierce determination to achieve greatness and more importantly, to live. It's just so admirable to me because, well, often there is nothing more powerful than the will to live. And Zhu is that kind of character. There is a lot of emotions in this book, there is a lot of tension within this book, and the prose, once again, as I said, is very lovely. Next on this list at number 9 spot is The Helm of Midnight by Marina Last Tether. This is the first book in the Five Penalties trilogy, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the author's first high fantasy work, and I think it's incredible. It's advertised as Hannibal mid Mistborn, though in my opinion, it's more precise to call it Jack the Ripper mid Mistborn. The magic system was reminiscent of Mistborn, but the mystery and the serial killer definitely definitely reminded me of Jack the Ripper so much. It reminded me of Jack the Ripper so much, especially because the setting felt like a fantastical London and the mashup of genres within this book felt quite refreshing to read. Although this book did took me quite a while to get into, but the moment the serial killer in this book has a POV chapter, at that moment, I was so hooked by this book because it was so interesting and intriguing to me. And I was so impressed by this one. I cannot wait for the second book, even though this one actually worked really well as a standalone. Next on the list at the number eight spot, is The Crown Tower by Michael J. Sullivan. This is the first book in the Ryria Chronicles series, and I love this one. I have missed Royce and Hadrian a lot ever since I finished Ryria Revelations in 2017. So that's four years ago. Yeah, that's four years ago, and I miss these characters. I miss this character so much, I never even expected that I would actually uh, read Ryria Chronicles because I was so satisfied with how Ryria Revelations ended already. And honestly, I was afraid. I was afraid that if I read the prequel, I will feel disappointed or something, or my feelings on the characters will change. But no, it wasn't the case at all. In fact, it's the other way around. I became more invested with these characters. I didn't think that was possible, but it is. Royce and Hadrian are one of the best duo in fantasy. It's simple as that. And seeing their first encounter was so fun. It was so fun. And there is also Gwen. I honestly never felt really invested in Gwen in Ryria Revelations, but this book, just this book alone, I haven't even included The Rose and the Thorn, which is the second book in the Ryria Chronicles. Just this book alone already made me so much more invested in Gwen. 
it's amazing. It's truly a prequel done, right? I still have two books left in this series and I don't want it to end. At the number 7 spot is Bloodline by Will White. This is the ninth book in the Cradle series. I just finished reading this book this month, so you will hear me talking about it again on my uh, June wrap up. But for now, let me just say this. This is the best book of the series for me. Cradle is quite likely the best selling self-published fantasy series right now. The sales for this series is immense, it's insane. Every new release now keeps on hitting number one spot in the entire Amazon non-stop. That has been the case since Uncrowned, the seventh book. But there is something a bit odd about me and this series. Every book that the majority of the fans considered as the best of the series usually doesn't end up that way for me, but the books that they considered as the most disappointing, even though they're all still good, uh, but the books they consider as the most disappointing always ends up being my favorite. And that's the same case for this one. Before Bloodline, there was Sky Swarm, the fourth book. I was afraid of this one because a lot of people said that this one was so disappointing. But that's not the case for me. I loved it. I loved it so much. And then the same thing was mentioned again for the seventh book, Uncrowned. Again, I think it was amazing. It was really good and I have no idea why people really disliked it. And then once more, the same thing was said for this one. And for me, this is the best of the series so far. I think Will White deals with a lot of heavy topics in this book, mainly in the first half, but in the second half, Bloodline was full throttle action, epic action, the best action of the series so far in my opinion. So good, and I cannot wait for the 10th book. And on the number 6 spot is Heroes Die by Matthew Woodring Stover. This is the first book in the Acts of Cain Quartet, and I will always say this every time I talk about this book, do not judge this book by its cover art. I totally understand that this cover art is really bad. It doesn't depict anything about the book at all. And the book is absolutely brilliant. This is one of the most underrated grimdark science fantasy that I've read so far. A lot of authors praise this one. Even Pierce Brown, one of my favorite authors of all time, praised this so much. And Heroes Die totally live up to all the praises. The actions were breathtaking. And to be honest, I think everything about this book was just so ahead of its time. It's incredible. At the number 5 spot is a book that I recently talked about. It is Daughter of the Empire by Raymond E. Feist and Jenny Words. This is the first book in Reform Empire trilogy. And unlike my experience with Reform Magician, this one absolutely clicked with me. It doesn't feel outdated at all. I think it lived up the test of time. And immediately from the first impactful chapter, I was, I was just already hooked. I was so hooked and immersed with Mara's story. Mara is one of the best heroines that I've come across in fiction. She is amazing, she lives up to the occasion, and despite the heavy responsibility that she has to bear, she still try her best to win in this deadly game of politics, the game of counsel. The game of counsel was mentioned several times in Rift War Saga, but it was only mentioned. I never felt that it was deadly, I never felt that it was brutal, but Jenny Words totally made the world of Calawan brims to life, and she also made this game of counsel felt so brutal and terrifying. It was completely engaging for me to see how Mara will navigate this insane game of politics. And it's not only Mara, the side characters were superbly written as well. And because this is a spin-off series in the Rift War cycle, uh, at least for this book, you don't have to read uh, Rift War Saga yet. At the number 4 spot is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is the Goldsboro edition and it has spray edges. Look, so beautiful, right? But the only reason why this didn't rank higher on this list is that because Elva, one of the main POV characters in this book, took me about half of the book for me to feel invested in. But the other characters were wow from the beginning, especially Orca. I love Orca so much. Just within this book alone, Orca already became one of my favorite characters of all time. She's absolutely incredible. I love reading about a badass warrior mom who try her best to protect her family. And John Gwyn totally delivered the amazing characterizations and action sequences once again. The Gwyn Tornado, the Gwynedo in these climax sequences were insane. I cannot wait for the next book. I cannot wait. This book is heavily Norse inspired and it's very clear from reading the narrative that John Gwyn knows his stuff. He really knows Norse mythology and he poured it into his book. I loved it. I loved it so much. Now we have only three books left in this list. At the number three spot is The Hand of the Sun King by J.T. Greathouse. 
This is the first book in the Pact and Pattern trilogy. As I said, I have no doubt that this will be the best debut for a book published within this year. This one is absolutely amazing. I didn't have any expectation for this one. I just picked it up because, well, the cover looked pretty. Oh, but this isn't the official cover art because this is the physical art edition, so the real cover art is different. The thing that impressed me the most about this book is that the author's prose flows so well. It's lyrical, it's lush, it's incredibly immersive, and an absolute delight to read. I just had so much great time reading this book. It contains a lot of magic, it contains a lot of discussion on culture, and I really love the focus on calligraphy and writing. I don't think I've read any high fantasy book with such a high focus on calligraphy and writing. And the world building is very Chinese inspired. And I totally love the storyline of the main character, Wen Alder. I hope that the second book will start to focus more on the side characters as well, because this book is all about Wen Alder and it was brilliant. Hands down, my favorite debut for a book published within this year. Now, I will be honest, for the number one spot, I honestly cannot decide between these two books. I cannot. I have tried my best to decide which one I actually love more, but I cannot. So these two books will have to share the number one spot. And the first one I'm going to mention is Dreams of the Dying by Nicolas Litza. If you have followed my channel, this shouldn't come as a surprise that this appeared on my number one spot because I think this one is a masterpiece. Dreams of the Dying is the first book in Enderal series. It is also a prequel to the main game. The main game is called Enderal as well which I haven't played yet, and I can confirm that it's completely okay to read this one without playing the game first. Although, I have heard a lot of amazing things about the game, but for Dreams of the Dying, everything about this book match what I love in Dark Fantasy or Grim Dark Fantasy. Why Dark Fantasy? Because there is actually horror element in this book, and the dream sequence within this one is, wow, it's terrifying. It's terrifying, and it all felt so vivid. The world building and the magic system was fascinating, but most importantly, the characterizations were phenomenal. Nicholas Litzau characterizations for the two main characters, uh, Jesper and the man, both of them were unbelievably good. It was so good. They're not technically the most likable characters. I don't think they were ever intended to be likable anyway, but the background and the personality given to them made me insanely invested in their journey. I was so invested in their story, I couldn't put this book down, and even though this was 800 pages long, it, it didn't feel like it. It was so compelling, it was so addictive, it is truly magnificent. And this book deals heavily with the topic of depression, and I personally believe that Dreams of the Dying belong in the grimdark subgenre. So if you love grimdark fantasy, do not wait, read this one, seriously. It is amazing. I think the second book uh, will come out at the end of this year, or maybe uh, the beginning of next year. It is one of my most anticipated books right now. And the other number one spot, I have to give it to The Empire's Ruin by Brian Staffley. For this one, my expectations were really sky high. Because here's the thing, I think Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy was great. It was a great trilogy, but Skullsworn, uh, the standalone prequel to the main trilogy, was absolutely amazing. But The Empire's Ruin, the first book in Ashes of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, which is the continuation to Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, is a masterpiece. I cannot say anything else about this book except that it is truly a masterpiece. I have mentioned this several times that there were a lot of scenes in this book that reminded me of the first time I was reading The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I don't give that kind of praises lightly. I don't think I ever give this kind of praises to any other book. It was phenomenal. I didn't think that Brian Staffley would be able to craft a character more compelling than P. Ray Lakatur, which is the main character in Skullsworn, but I was proven wrong. And I'm happy for that because Gwena, wow. I don't know what else to say, I just felt so much for this character. She underwent a lot of hardship within this book. And Brian Staffley was not afraid to put this character through a lot of torture mentally and physically. There's just so much, there's just so much about the Empire's Ruin that I love. And it is impossible. It is quite impossible for me to talk about them in full details again because I have done a full spoiler review for this book. And actually, I have done a full spoiler review for all the top 5 books I just mentioned on this channel, not just on Goodreads and on my blog. But I highly, highly recommend all of these books. I highly recommend The Empire's Ruin. But if possible, please, please try to read Chronicle of the Unhuman Throne trilogy first. At least read that one first, because I do believe that will enhance your experience on this book a lot. A lot. Because Gwena is a very important character in the main trilogy. 
and without reading that trilogy that shaped her character so much, you will be missing on a lot of things that would have ended up enhancing your reading experience of this book. But to conclude this list, let me just say that The Empire's Ruin is a masterpiece. And I cannot praise these books highly enough. So the number one spot for the best books of the year so far will have to go to both Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Litzau and The Empire's Ruin by Brian Staffley. Yeah, that's all from me today. What do you think about this list? Have you read anything that I mentioned here? And if you haven't, which of these 10 books interests you the most? And lastly, thank you so much for your support. Seriously, it's been a crazy nine months. I truly appreciate that you guys keep on watching my content. And so far, practically all of you were very polite and understanding in your comments. I truly appreciate this. So yeah, that's it for me today. Let me know the best books you've read this year so far. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye.